You will ask the questions before we... Oh, please. <laughs> Your Majesty, no, I would like to ask you on behalf of Polish people who <laughs> know quite a lot about you, about your activity, about Iran, but not too much. I would like to know, because this is similar to Polish problems, how to provide the development so rapidly on various fields. But this is not the only aim. People will not be happy only by that. They should be happy people. They have to live culturally and spiritually and um, because material development has no end and people cannot be satisfied by only that. And we have many examples in the whole world of very developed industrial nations where people have a very high standard of living materially, but there is always something missing, something lacking. That now we feel that these countries are trying to find solutions for these human problems in old cultures of the Eastern nation or other old countries because there is something which is missing. So we really see by experience that the material development is not all. And we, who unfortunately have been retarded maybe when the whole world was getting civilized, uh, I mean modernized and developed in the modern world, we remain backward. But at least we have this chance of not repeating the mistakes of the others, and really to develop uh, within our own mentality, culture, and traditions. For me, it's very important to, to keep our cultural life and our traditions. Maybe in our traditions, they are part of our tradition which are not good for today's world, but there are many good side of it. And this we have really uh, to take care of it and to develop in a way that our people should be happy and proud of uh, their nation and their culture. And um, it is important to see what others have done in other worlds and to do the same thing in one's own country. But I think in, within our own cultures, we have to find ways for development. Otherwise, there are always countries which are richer, more advanced. And we, if we always look at them, we will be always frustrated because we cannot maybe catch them in, in some ways. So in our own culture and nation, we have to find ways for our development. But regarding the education, particularly the education of adults on various fields, not only for in engineering, but on ver not all fields of education, not in universities only. How, Your Majesty, what is your, your outlook on such a problem? How to, to help the people who are grown up, but to, join, to, to help them to join you know, the educa educated? And we... Um, but education it's not only to teach people how to read and write. It's to teach them how to live, how to yeah. cooperate, how to participate in every field in the development of one's country. These are things that uh, it's easier really said than <laughs> done. But uh, it's important already that, that we know about that. And uh, we have to see in our own way of thinking, in our own uh, mentality, how to attract people to participate. This is the most important thing, I think, in, in a country. To have partic uh, people participating in all levels of life in their development, whether cultural, political, social, or educational. And this by uh, really maybe putting a new quality in our education, because till now our problem was to only teach people read and write, to teach them how to become engineers, doctors, and so on. But I feel that we have not taught them how to live, how to be in contact with the real life. We have, uh, well, this is the problem which is happening all over the world, that we are putting children in the schools just filling their minds with some things to, they have to learn by heart, but sometimes forgetting that 
what is life outside of this school and how they must participate. I think we have to change the really uh, our books, our way of education to train teachers like we used to have. Teachers were like uh, fathers to the children. They would educate them in many fields. They were not only uh, teaching them chemistry or physics, and that was all. You know, they should have a m more variety of activities and much more contact with, with the children. And also, I believe, putting emphasis on cultural activities in through radio, through television, through press, through cultural centers, through all the means of culture, which is theater, music, painting, poetry, um, literature, and uh, maybe in the political gatherings, really to teach people how to participate. I believe that this is um, very important, that uh, people should feel that if there is progress, they have been part of it they have helped for this progress, then they will in the future have much more the value of this progress than if only, in my point of view, the government provides for them development and progress. They feel less the value of it unless they have done something for it. It's the old story of the gardener who is planting his own tree and taking care of that flower he's planted. He has much more the value of it that somebody else who plants a tree for you and you had nothing to do with it. Of course, these are the avant-garde uh, activities, but uh, let us not forget that Iran is very familiar with your old uh, composers, and I'm myself a um, really lover of Chopin and his music. And we have had uh, many years ago an Iranian woman who has won the Chopin Prize uh, in the competition. Yeah. But uh, we are uh, this year develop, uh, starting a new uh, festival, a folklorist festival. And we hope to have the participation of your country in the future because you have such a colorful and rich folklore. And I am sure that uh, in the future we will have uh, our cultural, and in all the fields, we will develop our relations. And I know that in your country, you have uh, many uh, pieces of our own culture that you put on exhibitions and people are familiar with. So I hope we will have much more of this uh, kind of relation. And a few words. What's your picture, Your Majesty? I think the first. I have to mention also uh, your participation of our International uh, Children's Film Festival which is an important festival, and we have since uh, 10 years ago have every year had the participation of Poland, and you have won many prizes in this festival. We have also, I think, the participation of Poland in our, uh, again, another film festival that is uh, for, not for children, for grown-ups. And um, really keeping the cultural identity of a nation we must uh, really work hard on different fields because today the relations, cultural relations are, are done so quickly and so fast through press, through media. And in Iran, uh, we have been invaded in our history twice by another cultures, but we have always assimilated those cultures and made them Iranian. And I hope that uh, this modern wave of other cultures coming to Iran, we will be able also to assimilate it and not to let ourselves be destroyed by that culture. Of course, it's not always negative. The, uh, what comes to us, there is a lot of positive things. And uh, this we have to keep our environment, our architecture, our literature, our past, our monuments, and also encourage new we have to keep our folklore. We have to keep our uh, evil details of uh, continuing to, to keep our own food, because even this is disappearing in some of the countries, because people do not have time to spend time on making food, which takes us. And all those sometimes which seem to be detail, 
but it's important to keep them all. We know that there is in, in Iran there is uh, 38 organizations, social, cultural, and so on, organizations on, under your patronage, your majesty. Would you mind telling us which fields, which organizations are the most, mm, most close to your heart, let me say? Well, uh, whatever is... Uh Really, there are, there are many, well, and um, keeping the environment and uh, of the nature and also our architecture, which is, this is also very difficult because when a country develops so fast, we destroy so much. But we are trying hard by creating committees in different parts of Iran to really try to build with the mentality of our people, with, their, uh, uh, with the climate at least of the country and with the surrounding that our people are used to live in. Because I'm sure that in the future times we'll have many problems if we build houses for our people without taking care of their needs. And uh, education is for me important, science is important, and uh, the rural areas, agriculture is important uh, for me because, uh, you know, always cities develop much, much faster than the rural areas. And uh, still in Iran, the majority of our people are agriculturals and living in the villages. We have to... Uh, raise the standard of living and prevent them as much as we can from immigration into the big towns because this creates a lot of problems. And also that I believe that we have to be able to to survive with our own production, agricultural production, because uh, when the oil will be finished, as my husband says, maybe in the two, 25 years, we have to rely on other sources of um, wells for us, which is industry, of course, which is agriculture, and most of all, I think, also our human being, if well-educated, that could be a really very important wells for a country. It means that almost all fields of human being, except oil. <laughs> well, this is... Um, uh, what I try to do really in my country by uh, helping my husband in the areas that he has no time maybe to see to the details. And uh, there are of course many areas that I'm interested in because when uh, it's your country and your people, you cannot say this is not my field. And I think that I'm in a position that uh, if I can help, if uh, people come to me for help, whether it's at the national level for the country or also, I think, in my position at the personal level. If people have uh, problems, they write to me thousands of letters every year and I have uh, to see to those demands. Maybe we cannot satisfy them all, but at least someone to, is there to, to listen to, to their problems. And I think uh, being a queen in the country has always been as a mother to the people. I think I, I have to be <clears throat> available and always ready to hear whether it's a personal problem or a national problem. Of course, sometimes it becomes very difficult when one is divided in many different activities. And uh, lately it has been difficult because you cannot do all. And uh, I try to always think of the priorities and spend much more time on energy on that and have these organizations well organized that I don't have to see for the details myself. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, so hot. It's very humid and hot here, yes.